Hello world and thank you for joining me on Anaphemus TV today. Today I have the opportunity or I am very excited to have one of the most prominent women and strongest women that I know when we speak of women that have grit, that have tenacity, I believe that um, this woman that I'm about to introduce is one of the women that I feel like we we haven't celebrated her enough in the African community. Today, I have one of our very own, a visionary, um, a very innovative, um, a very innovative leader among both here in the USA and then um, in the African community. I have no one other than Mrs. Martha Halley. Hello. Hello. Wow. Finally. Finally. <laughs> yes, finally we are here. So today, you and I, is going to be a very casual conversation, you yes. know. Um, I like those casual conversations. Good, good. Um, I've known you for, I would say, half of my of Your life? Day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not only have more than half more, of your life. <laughs> more, more than half of, of my life. And um, I've, I've grown to know you. I've grown to observe you, the work that you do. And um, you're very inspiring. You're very inspiring. And um, with, you know, just off the beat, I would go ahead and then get into Amazing Grace. Because one of the reasons why we're doing this um, interview and having this conversation is amazing grace but in between the amazing grace there are also other things that you know would unfold as we have this in conversation so um let us know what amazing grace are because um i know that you are the founder of amazing grace i think god is the founder he just recruited me to manage it <laughs> that's how i see it because it's not something that i sat down before you sit down to plan something, you trying to plan it, put sustainability and the ups and downs, how it will succeed and stuff like that. I didn't do that. I didn't want to do that. And that is not what I came to the United States to do. Just like all of us, we came to look for the greener grass. We came to work. We came to make life better. So I believe that Amazing Grace is orchestrated, established by God, and he just recruited me to manage it or to do whatever I need to do for it. And Amazing Grace to, in the nutshell, Amazing Grace Evangelical International Ministry Sync. Of course, I'm an ordained minister, ordained evangelist. You can call me pastor, chaplain, whatever you want to. But Amazing Grace is an outreach helping ministry. Okay. It's just a helping ministry. We have community resource centers, one in Fayetteville, one in Jonesboro in USA, of course, Atlanta, Georgia. And we reach out to the community in our resource centers. I call it a safe haven because we wipe tears. We put people together. We put broken lives together. We have food pantry, clothes pantry. We have a large youth empowerment group called Choice Youth Empowerment. We teach them about choice making. And that is why one of my books is called Choice, uh, Life or Death. And we teach them about good choice making because choice is very important. Choice can take you high, can make you or break exactly. you. So that is choice. But if we talk about Amazing Grace, we service the whole of Atlanta communities. We service about four, five, six counties. We work with the police. We work with the, anything that a person need to make life to the next level or to the next day is what we provide at our resource center. So you walk in there. If it's something that we cannot do, we can refer you to other places. Okay. Not only are we in the U.S., Georgia, but we also in Ghana as well. We are in the Ivory Coast, we are in Kenya wow. and London as well. We have presence in some other places. So wow. in the nutshell, if you ask me more about it, I will tell you, but that is what Amazing Grace Evangelical International Ministries called Amazing Grace Resource Centers. There's a few of the things we do. We oh, do wow. more, but wow. those are just people. So let me ask, on a typical day, if somebody should walk into Amazing Grace, you know, facility, 
what is that person's day is like you know if the person is in need of whatever that it is on that typical day what is amazing grace to that person you went to our old center i hope you stay there for a minute we are the new place which here is a lot of calm than the hard old place they walk in there it's either they are crying it's either they are frustrated it's either they are angry it's either they are they don't come in happy let me one thing i will tell you that and our present there are a lot of non-profit organizations but i believe in experience what really amazing grace. the difference between amazing grace and most nonprofit is that we are there to change your perspective under which you came in mm. with and most of the people just say not most uh, maybe about 99.1 don't come in happy they either come in crying frustrated uh angry whatever but our experience in our praise is to change that Okay. To let you go happy. So what does um, Amazing Grace does for that person? Amazing Grace happy? will let you sign in. Then they will ask you first, maybe you want water to calm yourself down, whatever you want. Whether coffee, hot tea, water, whatever. That is our experience. Mm -hmm. So we will make sure. And then, you know, we ask you why you came in. It's either maybe my light is off. I can't pay my light, but I'm homeless. We get a lot of, I'm homeless. I'm sleeping in my car. I need food. I need clothes. People come and sometimes here at Favorite, we will let them take shower if they want to take shower. And they will go to the clothes pantry, change their clothes, and then go. Some of them, they go going to interview. Some of them, they just want a refreshing. Some of them, they are like, be we have paid as much as $5 or $10 at a family that just to bring somebody's light on. Mm. Or, you know, I just get an argument with my husband, me and my kids are thrown out. And then we have to find housing or homelessness. What is it that we can do for the person? If it's light, we have to call other agencies that we work with. Okay. Normally, we don't get money for that. Whatever we do, putting that money is either from our pocket or I'm calling friends. Can you help me put this oh, wow. one in a hotel? Wow. Or sometimes the county will give us money, little money for their citizen, right. which maybe help us a little bit. But we always need help because right. we get a lot of the, especially these days, right. a lot, a lot, right. a lot. I mean, just to give you an update, it was it yesterday, day before yesterday, we were leaving, it was five o'clock. I don't know why I was lingering, which God does that all the time. Mm -hmm. Before I knew that was this man coming in with a wheelchair walker and crying. Mm. I'm like in my head, oh, no, today I want right. to go home. But this man who has been in the army, U.S. Army for a long time, oh, Vietnam, mm. was going to sell his phone and buy food for him and his dog. Mm. Mm. And he said he has lived in the area for a long time mm. and didn't even read our sign. Oh, wow. He drives, he goes to work it's when he was well and stuff. Mm -hmm. Until this particular day, he pick up his eyes and then he walk in. And that's how he walk in crying. Wow. But thank God we were able to meet that. I even pulled my wallet, took money for somebody to go buy dog food. We gave him more than enough food, more than enough. And he was sick. He was pushing. He couldn't, she shouldn't even be walking. Right. So I drove him home myself, oh, wow. you know, with all the food and stuff like wow. these other things, just to give you highlights. Of what Amazing Grace does. Okay, so now, in the beginning, you did say that um, Amazing Grace is orchestrated by God and, you know, was not your plan. And, you know, you didn't come to the U.S. to do this. At the same time, also... I know that you are a mother, you are a wife, and then um, one of the things that I think that inspires me most is that you being a sickle cell, you know, um, someone that lives with sickle cell, and sickle cell comes with great challenges, um, body-wise, mentally, and how have you been, through all this, been able to, to put up amazing grace, and then also, I would say, put up sickle cell challenges as well how has all this played together for you actually it's amazing you say that i was calling my doctor my sickle cell doctor calling the sickle cell clinic yesterday i forget and i said i would do it this morning i forget 
but it has not been easy. A lot of people see me as, oh, evangelist, this is this up going up be. Yes, you see what you see, but there are a lot of things people don't see and a lot of challenges of mine that people don't even know. Sometimes even including my family, they don't know all the other underlying when I'm laying in bed and nobody knows what keeps me going. Of course, I ultimately give all the glory to God. And that's why I told you that he established Amazing Grace, recruited me to manage it or do what I have to do with it. But, and because of that, he gave me the strength. He gave me the everyday zeal. Every day, there is a scripture in Jeremiah, I believe, uh, 22, that says, that, is there any bomb in Gilead? Is there any physician? Why is right. it that the daughter of my uh, child not here or something like that? But God is a great physician. I see him as he... Of course, just, you know a little bit, but you don't even know the whole story. I wasn't given any chance at all to leave. As right. a sicker. Yeah. And from where I was born and didn't even know, I wasn't even born in the hospital. I wasn't given any medical care. All this time, my childhood didn't have no normal childhood. All the challenges was just a point of death. And lo and behold, I was dead at school, covered with sickle cell stuff and and I'm here. So I see God himself giving me the strength to do what he wants me to do. Mm. And that is why I don't get money for what I do, but I do it passionately. I do it as though I'm being paid 50000 an hour. This is how passionate. What I work 80 hours and then I do it, but it's a heart. I see that God kept me gave me the life that the village was trying to help me not to die by giving me every help of the land of Africa, Ghana, for me to survive and to stay. The girl that will die, you see me and you will, can see that she will die because nobody will even tell you. No doctor, you can see me and ask me, are you a sick or so? But now this is how I look. Mm -hmm. This is not how I used to look. I right. used to look sickle, and you can see, are you a sickler? But this is what God has made me. Wow. And if he made me and gave me the life every day, I impart that life. I want to give it back to somebody else right. who is hurting, who right. is suffering, who needs some help. Right. So I do this passionately right. by God's grace. Wow. As my wow. All the other challenges, all the physicals. Actually, last three weeks, I was in a critical, critical crisis and I was in the hospital. Wow. But nobody knows. Right. I come out and I, I just have to do Bounce what back. I have to do. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, we bless God for that. And uh, we thank God because... Like your name says, amazing. It is amazing. You, you're living an amazing life. But when we look at on, on the outside, we see all the amazing things that indeed God has done for you. So, um, and I know that you, 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 you did say that you don't get paid for it. So my question is when it comes to funding, so how are you able to like to fund and um, um, <laughs> pro provide <laughs> Because <laughs> I know that it's tough here in the in the USA. It's not an easy thing. It's not. And a lot of people will come and, oh, I want to come and you show me how you get your funding. And I will laugh. And I say, <laughs> okay. And then will come. I want to come and you show me how you did this and that. Do you believe in prayer? I do. I think prayer and praying for funding and praying for God to take us another day have given me more gray hair than I should have normally get <laughs> It has totally been by faith. Actually, this year banquet, uh, as we celebrate our banquet this Saturday, our gala. I was going to talk about, hold, hold okay, on with, with the, I don't want to go there, yeah. but it will be like 14 years, uh -huh. December 10, when we physically had a place. We have we were doing it in my car, my home. People from jail were calling me, telling me my address. I'm like, oh Jesus, we need to find a place. <laughs> so being in a physical building, it will be 14 years. And actually, to be honest, 
there was something so, in hold me. Hold up, you, yes. you've, you've had some of the banquet in your house, in your car. Oh my uh, the, the banquet, we actually have the first one when we have a, our first little place. Uh -huh. And we didn't even know what we were doing. We call it dinner, the little first little place. That's where we started. Okay. But like Amazing Grace itself, we started it in my home. My home was so junky, it's not funny. And in our cars, other people's cars, before we even had a physical place, we were doing that. Wow. Wow. Once again, that's amazing. So now now that we're talking about the, the banquet, I think we will channel more because I know that you do know how to throw a good party when I say she does I not don't know a good about party. It. She does. <laughs> <laughs> she does not to throw a good party. So what truly came about with the, with the banquet? And, oh, um, my uh, God. Um, why did you ask that question? I did not <laughs> even know what I was doing, to be honest. And when you called me, the reason why I said I was coming, Dr. Hess' name has to pop up in this video. Mm -hmm. He called me to come to his house. We will talk about that later. Okay. But, I mean, I didn't know what else to do. We have our own little place. And I told Peggy and Portia, where people I was working with then, I say we need to have a dinner. They were like, dinner for what? What are we trying to ask? Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> and on and on, I went to this man who was a chiropractic doctor. And then he happened to fall in love with what I do. And I said, hey, I will have a dinner. I will invite you. And he said, really? Yeah, we will come. Mm -hmm. The next time I was there, he said, what is the dinner about? I, of course, I didn't know what the dinner was about. I just wanted to pay. I said, I think we want to pay some bills. He said, oh, good. That is fine. The next time I go to all oh, this time, I've said it, mm -hmm. but I, I just didn't know, you know. The next time I go to here, he asked me, so how much are you trying to raise? I'm like, oh, God, I don't know. Yeah. And so I said, 5000 And he said, Really? And, and I say, for what? And I say, for what we do to pay some rent? He say, if you are able to, this man actually made me think. He say, if you are able to raise that amount, then I, I will match it with another 5000 Oh, wow. So, I, oh God. so this is how your prayer that you're saying, because for a minute, when I said, how did you get your funding? And you, she's talking about faith. And one thing that I've known you all my life is you're, you're a faith person you are i mean you and your relationship sometimes when i think that it's it's a little bit absurd i'm like oh my gosh there also she's gonna have to say that is god okay <laughs> so i mean so when i had asked you about the funders and you're telling me that prayer in my mind i'm like here we go again but now I it, tell you, it, it it aligns to what you when when you let mean me that, tell you there is, is one prayer. thing mm -hmm. one thing to read the bible and stay back there and preach it. And it's another thing to leave the Bible. Listen, I'm a sickle cell. My parents from Ghana, those who know me, my father was a chief. My daddy, not the only that somebody threw money to, he worked for his money. He has some money. I, I wasn't in any crunch. I have to have money. Even when I came here, it was recently that I have to have a card. I have to have money on me. Wow. I, I get panic with that money. Right. But when this thing happened, <laughs> I was stripped with nothing. Wow. Nothing. Wow. Everything that I was doing came to a hot like. I mean, everything closed up wow. on me. I just, to the extent that the only thing that was open was what I'm doing. I will go, let me tell you how this started. And I was being stubborn. I know there was a calling on my life. I know that people have said it, prophets, I see it. I've seen it all my life. I have dream books and dream books about this calling. But I'm here. I'm busy. I'm doing my stuff. You're trying I'm to make the American life, you I'm know, like, come on. Cash. I, and yeah. people will tell me, I say, I'll do it. Uh, yeah, I know, God, until everything closes. My home daycare that I was doing somehow closed. My desk closed. And the agency that I work with wouldn't even hire me. This is going on, and the people who will call me to come preach, they don't even have money to give me to even buy gas to get there. And all that is going is this. Every Bible school in the United States mail me a Bible school application within that time. Mm. I will walk to for the application and say, we don't have it, but we have Bible classes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm still ignoring until one day I'm going somewhere and this lady has set up. So I stopped to see what he was doing. Right. 
As I walked to this lady, she looked at me and said, do you have a mattress for older lady? And in my head, I'm thinking, do I look like I sell mattress? I'm saying all the God forgive me, but that's the truth. I'm saying all this like I'm ignoring, and she keeps saying it. And because of that, I get so aggravated and wanted to leave. I pick up a brush and say, please, can you take my number? And just in case you come up with something, will you call me? Mm. I took the number, came to my car, threw the Three number in there, and then... Yeah. I'm like, I'm still like upset. Right. I drove for less than 10 minutes and somebody called me. And the person said, if you are watching this lesson, whatever God wants you to do, I'm telling you, you can run, but you cannot get away from me. Mm. I drove less than 10 minutes and I get a call from my friend. He said, listen, we're cleaning up our garage and this mattresses and stuff we have here got to go. You we, know we anybody, know. this is his exact word. Do you know anyone who need a mattress? Wow. At that point, I begin to shed. I parked the car, I cried. And I called the lady and I took the information for whoever that older lady was. Mm. And I paid the truck to go get the mattress and go deliver it to that old lady. From there, this thing has never stopped. Wow. Wow. It is always somebody calling me for something and the need comes. So I'm just a transfer spot. I, I just a distribution center. Time. I'm just a yes. distribution center wow. for whatever God want to do for his people. Wow. I'm just the sickles and the pain and the crisis. And he kept me here just to bring relief to the next person wow. with whatever they're going through. Wow. And that is why wow. I pray. That if you saw me, if you remember where I'm from and where I'm born, that little village never knows. So if God saw it to know me from that village like Mary and trusted me that if he keep me here, I can do this. Then way across the ocean to United States. Wow. And because of that, he has given me a voice and he has given me favor wow. that I can walk to any government or whatever wow. and they will hear. Wow. And that is nothing that is me. It's just God's thing. And I pray that God's connection. I can do it right. faithfully. Yes. Yeah, so do you want us to go back to the um, to the doctor? Wherever that, you want to go. So, just, yeah, yeah. So let, let's go back to the doctor because I'm very more interested in it. Because when you when you mentioned the prayer and then the doctor comes in and says he wants to match. Oh, the, yeah. Yes. So that's what the beginning of having... The physical this gal and, and stuff run. came in. Yeah. So this man said, if you do first, so that wake me up. Mm. For me, I ran to my car, sat down, I'm like, oh my goodness, you match it with five. That 5,000 was like a million to right. me. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> 5,000, are you kidding me? So now I come to the office and sat down and begin to plan. Right. And that is how I plan. And that is how the whole gala thing started. So oh. with prayer, I was praying. And this man, Dr. Hess, may God bless you. May God increase you. I mean, Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. since I've known this man, he has put in maybe 50,000 or more in amazing grace. Wow. In amazing wow. grace. Wow. Anytime I'm in crunch, actually, I came from his cell to... Uh, we will talk about that later. We're coming to you, we're Dr. Talking Hayes. About that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that he has money. It's not that there are rich people in Georgia. There are other people who have more money. It's that he have a heart for God's work. Mm. That is the difference. There are people, even if God put the money tree by their door and the money falls, they will no, never do it. Signs. But yeah. if you have a heart for the things of God and God, this is one destiny helper that I pray that God will open door for more of those. Amen to that. Amen to that. So we, we know that you have an upcoming banquet that is when? What day is that? It is this coming Saturday is October 24th, right? Okay. October 26th. 26, October 26th. Yes. Uh -huh. And 430 is the network and the reception and the program start at 5. Okay. And wonderful gala that we calling everyone to come and partake of it and kind of jingle with us and yes. see some of the things we do yes. sit back and see amazing grace yes absolutely and where do. where is it happening is it happening here in atlanta uh, yes yes right okay. here in jonesboro at hope banquet hall i think it's nine nine zero 
Ponsal Parkway, Hope Banquet Hope Hall. Banquet Hope Hall. Banquet Hall, right? In very nice, prominent Banquet Hall, well known Hope Banquet Hall in Johnsboro. That is where we will be. So we entreat you to come. Just if you come and say you saw this online somewhere, and we will give you a VIP seat. So come okay. and uh, come and enjoy with that for the sake of my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, okay. So, hey, this Saturday, if you don't have any, even when you have something to do, you know, just give a little bit of time, pop in into Jonesboro, Hope Banquet Call our Hall, and then come see what the amazing things that Amazing Grace is doing. Um, I know that you have a couple of people that you want to mention, want to thank. Um, I will give you the floor to do that. But personally, I also want to thank you because I've been wanting to do this for a long time, <laughs> but I know that you're, you're, you're busy and um, we bless God that today is the day that he said for you and I to meet. So I appreciate you. I, I, I thank you um, for having me today. I know that the world is in a safe place because you are in here doing amazing things for all these people that works in your life. Amen. And you know, uh, it was, I think, a couple of years back, and I said that God gave me, you know, the village at Hopley. How can I not mention that? That I was born. You know, back home, it takes the village. Everybody care about. You can see every other person, everybody bringing whatever help that they can so that I can survive. I can live. Of course, they didn't know what's sick. All they know is I'm dying, mm -hmm. and they're trying to save my life. And they, so some years back, I think it's about... Mm, three whatever year i built a facility for them for uh, like a toilet facility mm -hmm. they didn't have that did that and i just want to thank them that those people now it's different this generation has changed mm -hmm. and different people but those older people those my father and my mother those people who fought for my life of course they didn't know you know sometimes i will let them smell pepper hot pepper mm -hmm. and just slam it on me i'll let them tie me i will let them do that doesn't solve the problem of a sickle cell crisis but of course if you ignorance you don't know what the solution of something ignorance is a disease mm -hmm. by itself okay. and anything that you don't know it use abuse is inevitable yes. because it just didn't help but i just want to thank them those generations that has gone and i hope that my father and my mother stayed back to see this dying girl oh. that they were trying to save mm -hmm. what god has made up of uh of her. I don't know my father, I don't know, I think he's a prophet, but he said that your pen will take you far and you will do amazing things. That amazing name, I didn't put the name. That's why a lot your of you father. come right. and they say, well, take, change the name and maybe you get funded. How can I change something that I didn't put together? Right. I don't even know where the Amazing Grace came from. But everything that I've done had the name of Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. So I thank God for the people that has come to, I thank God for you. I draw for, I draw through my television. When I first saw it, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. And Lawrence, all those who help you because there are destiny helpers. There are a lot of things we want to do, but sometimes it takes someone to motivate you to be there to do it with you, right. for you. And I'm so, so, you don't even know because I don't even have time for us to talk or tell, <laughs> but I'm so proud of you for what you do because people have to hear, people have to do. For you to address, Free my television. Hey, go for it. That's it. I, okay. I love it. And I her, think. her. <laughs> but to all of you out there, everyone who has put a penny in Amazing Grace, and I mean a penny, okay? Anyone who has volunteered, anyone who has put their time, their mind, their resources, prayer, I, I just thank you for my heart. Years ago, I was praying, the Lord said, it's about the people who make it happen, not about you. Mm. I thank you so very much for helping me to fulfill destiny. And for my son, Leonard Arthur, I'm telling you, God knows what you need. Leonard, I am so proud of you. Of course, the whole family, my husband, who has just 
giving me as a wife to the whole nation <laughs> and my children who share me as a mother, mother. to everyone mm -hmm. and everyone i get a contract i say this is contract no pay i was telling on our team in ghana i said i get a contract here for no pay i'm doing it and i'm getting some for you mm -hmm. i'm sending them to the airport i'm letting them all the americans go in i have couple now with their children in ghana i'm letting people drive them take them to pray for no pay mm -hmm. I mean, these are things that excite me, just blessing and being there. There are so many people that nobody can be there for them. Mm. But to be there for someone that without you, nobody else will be. Beverage says that there is no shortcut in any place worth going. Mm. There is an African proverb that says that one man can never build a house. Mm. Listen, together we can do this. That is why our dinner, the team today is that you are a part of us. Mm. All of us, we are part together. There is something God wants you to do. And if you are watching this, you may say, I'm this, I don't have that, I don't have this, I'm sick, I'm this. Listen, you're looking at a sickle cell survivor. Mm. You're looking at somebody who has passed by covered you looking at somebody the circus have branded my eye and they say that's what i will live with it because it destroyed the retina of my eye right here in grady my records are there but god miraculously healed me i speak that god whatever you're going through god will make a way i thank you amazing grace family my family those who make amazing grace for happen, all the volunteers, all the sponsors, the board of directors, mm. and all of you. Of course, we need three board directors if you want to have a heart to bless and do things for the community and sit on our board. I'm inviting you to come on. Thank you all so very much. I really, really appreciate you. I salute you. And for God to give me a life to live another day, yes. to his name be all the glory. Thank you. So if somebody wants to um, to donate to uh, Amazing Grace, um, could you, you know, throw lights on? Uh, yes. How to do that? They can go to our website. The website is www.amazinggraceinc. Please, there's a lot of Amazing Grace out there. Okay, so it's so amazinggraceinc.org. Okay. AmazingGraceInc.org, okay. and there is a lot of donation options over there for you to donate. And we will appreciate you. We will personally try to strike friendship or whatever with you. Of course, we are five hundred one C three, and all donations are tax deductible. So, if you want to write that million dollar check to hey, hey, hey. you can call us seven seven zero four seven eight two six zero six or four zero four. Seven four nine eight zero five eight four four seven four nine eight zero five eight. Okay. That number also takes Zelle as well. So thank you for donations. Okay, <laughs> we need that to keep our doors open. I mean, seriously, yeah. we need you. You are part of us. We need you to keep the. I say this all the time, and it shows in my writing that it's not about you or me or whatever. It's about the people. Mm who you may not even get the chance to ever see. Mm. But when you get to heaven, it will be in your account. Amen. So thank you. Amen, amen. Hey, you you had it all, you know. All that is about is being there for one another, whether it's a stranger, whether it's a family member, whether it's a friend. So thank you for, for this is really inspiring. I love it. We should do it again. Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> I think we should have more time to do it and go into some of the things that we didn't even get yes, a chance yes. and just call people into this facility as well so yes. they can come to us. Yes, I think come we see should the do place. it again. Yes. So, hey. Once again, thank you for sticking by and watching Anafrima TV. If you haven't subscribed yet, you know what to do. Hit that button and then subscribe. If you have already, thank you also. Toodles.